Madam Chair, you are live. Thank you. Hey everyone, welcome to the April 27th, 2021 meeting of Arts and Public Places Commission. I'd like to call to order. First thing on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? Genevieve, if I make a motion to approve. Thank you, Barbara. Do I have a second? I second, I second that. This is Krista. Cool. Wonderful. Next on the agenda is approval okay. of our March 30th, 2021 minute. Everybody had a chance to review the minutes. Are there any additions, corrections, thoughts, or comments on the minutes? Nope. We have a motion to approve. So moved. Fabulous. So I have a second. I second. Thank you, Elizabeth. Hi. Hey. All right. Well, let's jump in then and start our old business um, updates. So I will let uh, Barbara introduce our poet la uh, laureate, Maggie um, Benshaw. Thanks, Genevieve. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I'm not camera worthy. I've had a rough 24 hours, so I'm not okay. going to put on my camera. <laughs> All good. Um, I'd like to introduce, is, is Maggie on? Do we know? I am. Okay, great. Um, for those of you who didn't attend yesterday, like myself, unfortunately, Maggie Margaret Benshaw has been inaugurated as our next Poet Laureate and uh, let her introduce herself and kind of give an overview of her vision for the next coming year uh, as our new Poet Laureate. Take it away, Maggie. Hi, um, good evening. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and thanks for those of you that tuned in last night. Um, so a little bit about myself. Well, you can call me Maggie. Um, I just, you know, Margaret is, if I'm in trouble. Um, <laughs> uh, this is my eighth year in teaching at Annapolis High School. Um, and I teach for the Performing and Visual Arts Magnet Program. Um, and I teach creative writing for them. So um, with that, I, my love of poetry that I already have has really blossomed and grown even more. Um, and I'm really just excited to share that love and really bring it hopefully to the forefront of um, the city of Annapolis. Um, hopefully we will get some, you know, once things let up a little bit, we can get some events going on downtown um, for youth and really for all ages. Um, April is National Poetry Month, so it kind of stinks that we haven't been able to do much this month, but I'm hoping that this summer we can really kickstart some things. Um, I know the first event I'm gonna be going to with actually some students, um, the, the Hood to Good poetry event is gonna be um, happening at Maryland Hall. So I'm excited to attend that and that's at the end of May. But um, yeah, I have so many ideas to bring to the table. Um, so I'm very excited to get started. Welcome aboard, Maggie. Yeah, Thank welcome. You. Thanks. Thank you for welcome. having me. So excited to be a part cool. of this. Thank you so much. Um, I did send out Maggie's poem last night. Mm. I hope everybody got it. Yep. And I will um, share on Facebook as well. Yeah, Maggie, I'm um, I'm Elizabeth Ramirez. So I'm the president of the Annapolis Arts Alliance. Hi. And hi. And we usually do an event in April obviously not this April, hopefully next April, um, with, um, with, with poets um, and um, poets and artists. We usually do a, um, we've been, what's been successful before COVID um, was um, um, me, uh, poetry and art. So poets would meet uh, with the artists and the artists would either write, an, I mean, the artist would either paint a picture or the poet would write a piece for the art. I love um, it. it was, yeah, it was really successful two years ago. I mean, we had, it was here in my shop. Um, I own a frame shop 
Obviously, there's frame shots <laughs> behind me, um, <laughs> frames behind me. Um, and um, we had it was we had like 50 people here, and it was awesome. So we're really hoping to do that next year. Absolutely, um, that sounds yeah. great. So yeah. I'd like to connect with you so we can figure out how how to reach out to more poets. We have tons of artists. Artists are not an issue. It's the uh, poets. Right. <laughs> yeah, that we always need help on and stuff. So I'd love to connect. So I have a chair for it already. Um, Max Oaks, and he's really excited. He's done it with me a couple of years now. So great. I love that. Yeah. And that's that that is funny that you said that. That's been what I've been thinking about too. How do we get these? How do we get more poets out and about? Because usually mm -hmm. as writers, we kind of like to hide away, um, you know? So yeah, that sounds great. I look forward to talking with you about it for sure. Cool, great. Well, yeah. Max, Max Oaks is a great guy to get to mm -hmm. know. He actually, yeah. he used to read poetry at the Quiet Water stuff and book all the Quiet Water stuff um, and, and was asked to step down, I think, uh, I think when we started going to war with Iraq, he read a poem that I think upset a few people in the audience. And after like 20 years of volunteering in his time to book all that, step down. But he's a really great uh, a musician. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm Brian Callahan, by the way, and and I I had a poetry day every month at 49 West for the last like 10 years. I would love to introduce you to that group and maybe some of your students or others could come to that. And I also work now in the mayor's office. So uh, either I or Mitchell will, I'm sure uh, reach out to either directly or through Genevieve to, for certain events um, that the city might be having to uh, have you read pieces you did great last night and i'm glad that the council uh all seemed to really enjoy your piece and thanks awesome. for sharing it, genevieve with all of us thank you thank that's you, good Maggie. to know that's good to know about that's interesting thanks for telling me about the quiet waters thing too i actually live right by quiet waters so maybe that's something um you know we can get get back on get back up and running very cool thanks Anybody else have any other questions for Maggie? Okay, well, feel free to hang out, watch the rest if you like. Um, we're gonna move on to Elizabeth for gallery updates. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Maggie, for joining us. Thanks, um, Maggie. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, the gallery updates. So Pip Moyer, um, Audrey Lee um, took her work down mm, Sunday, maybe. Um, she had one sale. Um, he actually came to the gallery. We were in the gallery today all day, changing out 11 walls. <laughs> like, this feels so good to sit. My feet are killing me. Um, but um, so one, and I think when, he, and she said, she said that when she spoke to people and then the one sale she got, they all said, there's just not enough traffic in here yet. Um, so I think that, um, cause she was actually, was supposed to go into the, to city hall um, back last Christmas. So um, I think we'll, cause her work is, you know, all around Annapolis stuff. So um, sort of holding off to see, Maybe I can put her again in again in like November, December again when it's things are starting to pick up more and there's more traffic at PIP, um, or if the city is ever open again. Um, but still, I don't know how much traffic will be in there. So, uh, but she, you know, she she had made up, you know, um, all her stuff and like, she got one sale. So um, um, that at least that's something. And then um, this weekend, Dale Hall is the next one. She's a photographer. Um, and she'll be going in from May 3rd to July 15th. The person I had coming in in July doesn't want to do it anymore. So I was like, hey, push it to, the, <laughs> to more. So um, we'll um, you know, see how that two and a half months see how that goes um, with Dale, you know, as a photographer. Um, and um, 
And then the person I, like I said, the person I had was um, Richie's, and uh, no, Richie, sorry, <laughs> Archie's friend. Um, he came and he showed us his work uh, maybe two years ago, but I, I, I've emailed him several times and he hasn't has emailed me back. So um, I'll start to connect, and, you know, with more people and stuff like that. And and uh, there's just there's just, I'm afraid there are not enough people in the different places yet. Uh, there are a lot of people outside, which is great. Um, so I'm a, I'll, I'll start working on it and stuff more. Okay. Um, so does Karma or do you want, or you both can give us the oh. update on the Stanton Center? Uh, yeah, I mean, we both could. Um, <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> we do have it under new business. Center. Yeah, yeah. Do I? Okay. Well, do you want to wait till then? Yes. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Jumping ahead. Mm -hmm. Gallery updates. Okay. What? When is the city hope to be open? The city hall. July or um, when Hogan lifts up the emergency state of emergency is basically I think when we're going to be opening up to public and so forth. Okay. So. Can you text me when that happens? Yes. <laughs> if I, in case I, I miss it. I know the minute I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is after everybody else probably knows. So. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, <Yeah. laughs> I just, I just want to be prepared because like I said, Audrey was, had planned to go in there. She could go in there um, with Pip. Pip has, she hung, I think 30 pieces at Pip. Okay. So, um, Less, I think, is hung at City Hall, so she'd be prepared to go in there. Okay. Um, although she put, she sells a lot at the gallery, so I don't know. Okay. Um, we'll go on to mural updates then, if nobody has any questions for Elizabeth regarding the gallery. So, um, this weekend, the Truxton Heights uh, Chesapeake Children's Museum entrance, the city retaining wall was painted. Uh, hopefully everybody's had a chance to see it. If not, I can send it out via email too, but it was beautiful. It really brightened up that corner. It looks great and the feedback has been wonderful on it. So really, really happy with it. Um, I did send out, uh, invitation notice for the ribbon cutting. Did everybody get that for the Cars Beach mural as well? Okay, good. And that'll be, that's coming up. So everybody's invited to attend that. Um, you can wear your masks. If you're comfortable, come on out. If not, that's fine. Um, live stream and um, we can participate still virtually, it's okay. Um, I don't have any um, other murals coming up with a taxi mural is still um, working on being funded. I'm not sure if they're pushing the date on that. I'd have to um, get an update from Jeff. Uh, and then I'm going to have um, Eric Lishinsky talk about the um, asphalt painting grant that we had started and we discussed in the previous meeting and he can give us a status of where we are and that kind of falls into the grants updates as well for the next. So if Eric, if you wanna go ahead and um, talk and then Joe can fill in anything that he needs to from the grants perspective. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> thanks for having me. Um, I'm really excited about this one. Have you guys talked about it previously much or? Yeah, Joe gave us an update at the last meeting on it um, because okay. you can attend. So th th yeah, we right. do have a brief um, description of what the project okay. is, but it has kind of changed a little bit from the last update. So go ahead and feel free to sure. discuss it. Yeah. Um, so this is a this is a grant program through the you know Bloomberg Philanthropies. It's called Asphalt Art. Um, it's something they've been doing for a few years. There's a, a pretty um, 
thriving, I would say, movement around um, place making using um, uh, painting on asphalt. Um, and, you know, it's uh, something we're not, uh, we're <clears throat> we've done quite a bit here already, I would say, in, um, you know, in places. And um, so it's not new to us, but um, there's a lot of opportunities for it. And the Bloomberg grant is really, I would say the types of projects they're looking for, uh, a lot of them are, are streetscape oriented, you know, trying to make um, streets safer and um, more human scaled and, um, you know, just, just generally improve pedestrian experience. The site that we identified for this is, um, is a driveway that wraps around Stanton Center. And it's a, it's, I would say it's kind of like the epitome of sort of underutilized space. You know, actually I could pull up some images just to kind of share with folks that, um, you know, it's, um, let's see here. This is, this is the site. I mean, I'm, I'm starting to pull together some of the materials. The grant is due at the end of, um, at the end of the week, um, as usual. Uh, you know, doing everything at the last minute here, but it's not, it's not a too, too onerous of, of a grant application. They've kind of designed it. So it's pretty straightforward, but you know, you can see when you zoom out, um, we're looking at, you know, the, the inner West street, Clay street area. Here's the state house um, on the right. And, you know, this driveway around Stan center um, cuts a pretty amazing shape in, in the city here, um, you zoom in and, you know, that's kind of what we're looking at. It connects West Washington to Northwest streets. Um, and, you know, it goes right in front of the entrance to the stand center. These are, I'm embarrassed to say, these are not my photos. I'm going to, um, get some better photos. This is Google, but just wanted to kind of show the context, um, for anybody watching at home as well. Um, you know, it's, it's a driveway. It's been used for parking. Um, this is the side on Northwest Street. Uh, clearly, it, it, it could be better. Um, it leaves a lot to be desired right now. So I know this project has been talked about for a while and, um, and I'm really excited that we'll be able to, to put this application in. And I think we have a great chance. I mean, I think if you think about the Stanton Center's history and the importance it has in the community and the, the need and um, the opportunity here, I think we can make a pretty good case for it. Um, so you probably have already seen uh, some info about the, the, um, the grant program. And, um, you know, this is an example from Norfolk that they funded that, um, you know, gives you a sense of, they're looking for projects that will really be kind of catalysts in the community and transformative. And um, it's only $25,000, but I think for a project like this, it could go a long way. So um, that, that's the project. I mean, we, we're working with um, Future History Now and George uh, Lassie Belt is a resident artist in the Parks and Rec Department. And, um, and kids and community members, ultimately, you know, this will be a community project. So um, that's, that's what, what it is. We don't, we don't, you know, we're gonna probably leave some of the definition to when, you know, when we get the grant and we get to do the project and people involved can help define it ultimately. But, Eric, do you have a theme or a tone in mind or anything you're looking towards or is it just going to leave it up to the artists? Uh, I'm kind of deferring to the artist. Um, I think, you know, the, the idea is that I, I think what will be best is if the, um, the kind of intent of it as this um, outdoor space for the stand center that, that could be... Uh, activate activator of programs and play and learning you know could probably be part of that description but the actual forms and um, 
imagery, and, you know, and that's something that would come later. But um, I'm, I guess I'm just most excited about the the, um, the space being turned into something that could be used for programs. You know, that's but I don't think we have anything more than that right now. Um, yeah, basically, the Stanton Center will take the lead on it with Lassie. And Lassie uh, requested that Jeff come in on the project with him because he's done projects with, with uh, Future History Now and Kids Making History before. So um, Jeff was brought in to help with the grant process. Additionally, with um, Jeff's history of working with creating community spaces with kids and stuff was essential part of the grant too. So um, we're letting them lead on the theme, but as Eric said, it's basically creating space for community gatherings so they can utilize it and, um, you know, the kids can put, you know, whatever type of games or um, scenes into the art along with Jeff's suggestions and Lassie. So the key part right now is just to get the money. <laughs> Yes, thanks. Eric, I'm so glad you're here so that the rest of the uh, the uh, commission here can meet you. Um, if if you guys haven't met Eric, you know, he grew up here, went to key school, but he's been in Austin doing planning, but now has come back to his hometown. And, and I've been working with him uh, very directly on all the bike connectivity, and he's doing all the comprehensive planning for the city. So he really gets what this commission is about with public art and it, it's great to have him here so that you can all meet him. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, I, I, I you know, I've met um, several of you, but those who I haven't, um, just hope I can be a resource to the commission. Um, you know, I know you're all volunteers. <laughs> um, so I want to support the projects that you have and, um, you know, they, this is an example of a funding opportunity that um, that you identified, and you know, I really wanted to help get it in. And um, you know, because I'm a comprehensive planner, I'm sort of thinking about these places uh, from different angles. And you know, the art component is just is just one of them. But this is um, this is really close to kind of an intersection that we've been talking about a lot for reading. You know. Um, activating commercial storefronts and providing uh, more apartments above them. And, you know, so there's a lot of other things going on, but um, I think the art can really add to that. So um, it's a, definitely definitely agree. A, key, a key component of uh, any kind of change. So. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Go ahead, Karma. So the grant itself, reading through it, is twenty five thousand. Um, is what we're hoping for. If for some reason we don't get that grant, um, is there any other plan or wheels in motion to try to alternately fund? Um, will this project will it actually take the twenty five thousand? Um, could it be done for less? Could it be done through some other partial grants? I guess that's like ten questions, but. <laughs> um, yeah, if for some reason that we don't get the grant, um, then yes, we can still look forward moving it forward as a project through AIPPC or, you know, in partnership with, um, you know, other, you know, maybe even with the state, you know, to get some um, grants from them for art or various other avenues. So I don't think it's a um, done deal. And I don't think, you know, the project will will just go away if we don't get the grant funding, so. Right. I, I would also add that the, the webinar, they made it clear that you can reapply, um, you know, that you can go through another round. And if the project evolves, that would probably only make it stronger if, if we didn't get it in the first round. <clears throat> yeah, did you have anything you wanted to add, Joe, about attending the webinar for everybody? Cause I know you updated Eric and I, but. Yeah, I, I mean, it was, I mean, the, the application is pretty cut and dried, they, which I actually find incredibly challenging. They don't want a lot of verbiage and they're very specific about what they're looking for. But I would say, 
I certainly think the intention of the project and in particular, the way it, 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 to call it an extension of the Stanton Center into a kind of public space, I think is a super strong message based on what I heard. Um, they, they, keep, they kept emphasizing the infrastructure part of it, like the street part of it, as opposed to the art side, which I kind of get. But so whatever goes forward as the application has to kind of say stuff about that. But honestly, I think it's the community space that's that seems like the intention of the program to me very strongly. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's one of those applications where they want, you know, 100 words or less, uh, several different things. So it's uh, counting words. Um, it's always challenging to, to write briefly about something that you can probably write pages about. Yeah. I mean, they have the pull down menu stuff, which I think is actually fairly helpful because it kind of gets rid of a lot of the verbiage for you. But then it's like, what's the problem you're trying to solve in 200 words? Yeah. So, um, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Great. Does anybody have any other questions regarding the grant process? Okay, I'm looking forward to completing it and, mm -hmm. and applying, um, crossing yeah. our fingers. Everybody send some good goo goo magic out there for us. <laughs> I think it's a pretty quick turnaround too. I think they, yeah. so. Yeah, we should know, good. which is great. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. Again, feel free to hang out with us if you can and we will move on then. Um, unless Karma and Joe had any other grant updates. So then we can move on to public outreach. Uh, currently, um, um, I guess I can start off with the 4th of July update because we just had the meeting this morning. Um, we are still you know, in the um, preliminary concept planning for the whole weekend. It, it is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then I think they're proposing sidewalk sales on Monday, because Monday will be an observed day for the holiday, since it falls on Sunday. Did I say that right? Monday. And, um, but we're not planning any other events for Monday, as far as from the art scenes. So what we're looking at currently, let me pull this up, is, um, for Friday, we are still looking to do with uh, co-hosted by Art Farm at Maryland Hall, a family picnic night. And that'll be out at the track area and spreading out towards Weems Whalen. The, um, the family could RSVP for a circle. It's free, but that way we're still physically distancing the families and they can have their picnic spot. They're talking about bringing in some food trucks and possibly some kid-friendly music, but definitely having some um, an option where you could purchase an activity pack for the kid and it could um, for the children, and it could have art supplies in it so they can create some sort of um, art that's themed for the holiday. We we're also thinking about incorporating decorating the floats because that would be part of. Um, the parade on Saturday is they're looking to have a juried um, float um, contest, decorating contest. So that could be part of the family night event is decorating the floats back there as well. Since it is close to the parade lineup, they could decorate, um, they could park the floats overnight, possibly there, be ready for lineup in the morning on Saturday. Also on Friday, um, there was a request to have a concert at Chambers Park. So that is in Ward 3 and the family picnic is in Ward 1. Um, I think as well, there will be a, yeah, there's a welcome event, I think on Friday from four to seven. We're not planning that, but that's for the tall ships coming in because on, um, Sunday, the tall ships will have a parade. 
down there. So in the water, um, preferably. <laughs> and then um, uh, for Ward 2, Karma um, presented the idea that we could do um, some bike parades and they could decorate the bikes, the kids could decorate the bikes, that um, they could create some art out of that. Um, let's see. And then um, Ward 6, um, which could be in conjunction with Ward 5, that's something else that we discussed this morning that you know, we want to have large spaces to have these events at so everybody can spread out. So if you have a common space, like Maryland Hall would service, um, you know, it could Ward 3, Ward 2, Ward 1, you know, anybody in the city, you know, can come there. But within walking distance, there are three different wards. So we could do that as well for um, Ward 5 and 6, as well as 8. Um, could walk there too, but have uh, an additional event at Pip um, Moyer in the parking lot. Possibly, I did reach out to Parks and Rec today to ask if they had anything already planned. They don't um, for the 4th of July. Their big marketing push was going to be for the pool. So um, I don't know at this point, um, Archie will respond to my email, but we could possibly do this and Bumper could also reach out to them too about um, having something there at Pip Moyer. Then um, for um, Ward 7, we are thinking possibly um, reaching out to Quiet Waters in the county and seeing what they had scheduled for the weekend and maybe we can just partner, we can do a partnership with the city and the county at Quiet Waters since it is such a, a large area and could accommodate people physically distancing and having some events. So um, for outreach, we will reach out to them and see what they have planned. Uh, for Ward 8, we were looking at partnering with uh, Annapolis Maritime Museum or Second, um, Second Avenue to do stuff there because those spaces, they have had events before. They do music there. We know that the neighbors are receptive to that but um, we still need further outreach for that. Nothing has been um, discussed as far as like planning. Uh, Saturday, the parade will start at 10.30 a.m. Um, again, AIPPC, that's a, that's a city thing. AIPPC isn't um, coordinating any of that, um, but they are looking to do the juried float decorating contest so that that can be artistic and can be fun so we can help promote that. And then after the parade, uh, Main Street will remain closed. West Street will close down around four o'clock. So they're going to do a dinner under the stars both Friday and Saturday night. So West Street will be closed. Main Street will close right after the parade on Saturday. And um, we're looking to book bands at the top of Main Street, not at City Dock. So we can bring the... Um, people up all through Main Street and not congregating just at City Dock. We're looking to hire three different bands, a 45 minute set each. Uh, the music would be from one to four o'clock. I don't have anybody confirmed for that yet. So I've started to reach out to ask if people would like to do that. I am finding um, with asking people to perform, people are not saying no, but they are expressing that they are trying to get the band fully vaccinated before they agree to do gigs. So I told them to definitely contact the city if they need an appointment. Um, possibly an appointment could be scheduled at Pitt Moyer, but also telling them that there's walk-ins at the Naval Stadium too. So definitely need to get our artists um, vaccinated who want to be vaccinated so they can perform for us this summer. So something to keep in mind if you run into anybody make sure that you refer them to those two clinics they're right here in town and they can get some shots so once um i hear back from people whether they can perform at main street i'll let you know and then also i was looking to bring um a special event in with tango and with salsa so Tango would be on Friday night because that's their usual night to perform. 
And then salsa would be on Saturday, leaving City Dock open for Sunday. Salsa normally performs for us on Sunday, but on Sunday, the Navy Jazz Band will be there. They are tentatively um, have agreed to perform before the fireworks on Sunday. So, and I think I'm going through my list here, but I did share it with all of you. So um, feel free to edit. Oh, I did reach out to the Annapolis Police Foundation. And um, unfortunately, because it is a very busy weekend, which understandably so, um, they will not be able to host movie nights for us that weekend. So if we can find somebody else with an outdoor movie screen um, and projector, then possibly we could do movie nights on that weekend. But as it is right now, I don't think we're going to be able to do movie nights. But let me know if you know anybody that, that could service us for that. I have a projector if you need one. Do you? Okay. Yep. And we've used okay, it here so outside. So it's, 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 it's It'll do the job. I don't have a screen though. Okay. Well, maybe if we had like a large wall somewhere too, we could project it off of that if it was the right color, but okay. Well, at least we have a projector and we, we have something to work with. So I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, Bumper. That or maybe the police might lend, let us use their screen. I don't know. We can ask Kevin, but I'm not sure, but, yeah. but we can, yeah, we can ask. Um, hey Genevieve, Genevieve, something else to think about. Um, 45 minute sets um, for bands to get through. I lost you. He froze. Okay, we'll come back to Brian. I already had a sound oh, guy already set up. We lost you there for half of that, Brian. Sorry. I'm sorry. My internet in my bedroom is not great. But a sound man that day, that like John, the guy who does West Street, so that the bands can just unplug. Right. Up. Yeah, Brian, you probably want a back line if you can if you yeah. can afford it. You know, just get a drum kit and some amps already there, and it kind of makes for a quicker turnaround. If, if, yeah. You know, the budget yeah. Can, you know, we were, like yeah, we were thinking of doing big bands, so it would be the same setup, basically, you know, for each band. Yeah, it wouldn't be too much changing in between, so. And do we, this is Krista, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, a couple things um, that I'm thinking of is, uh, you know, most of these events that are all outdoors, what happens if it rains? Is there a rain plan? You know, this is a lot of effort and plan. I'm not poo-pooing any of it, yeah. mind you. I'm supportive of it. But it is a lot, you know, a lot of what you have offered. Um, and it's a lot being offered. So in other words, when I think back to July 4th, um, we used to do a, a house event on our block. It was a block party every July 4th because the, the fireworks came up over our block. Um, but with that said, you know, a lot of our crew, and this is back, you know, several, <laughs> several years now, but a lot of people are going to be on the water. Um, a lot of people will be coming down for the 4th of July event, some for the parade, you know, some for fireworks, um, if there's plans for that, which I assume that there will be. Um, but a lot of the other businesses are going to probably close earlier, only be open for a short amount of time. I mean, typically July 4th, a lot of people go out of town to visit family, they go to the mountains, they go to the beaches, um, they may be doing their own little side picnics and that sort of thing. Are we spreading ourselves too thin to have all these different events going on? Um, like, for example, we talked about Ward 5 and um, Bumper, I know you're here too. Um, doing something at Pitt Moyer sounds great or even just making the event about the pool and making that, that could be, um, you know, a real splash, pardon the pun. But um, if we do also something over in um, the Grape Shopping Center in that area, I know that they've already said that on July 4th, they'll, they'll probably be only open for a limited amount of time. I reached out also to Main and Market and that little market area there in SOFO, um, same sort of thing. People will be closed and people will be um, only open for probably a limited amount of hours. So, 
you know, I just want to make sure that we are putting our energies in the best places. And, you know, sometimes less is more, even though I love the idea of doing something in the, you know, in the wards and each of the wards, but do we want to maybe do it like something in the wards for the month of July? Like, like, in other words, not just 4th of July weekend. Well, Krissa, it's, it's, it's an event like each day, basically. So we don't have to have an event in each ward for each day. It's just, we're trying to make sure that we spread out the events throughout all eight of the wards okay. over three days. No, and, and I love that. Yeah. I love that idea. I love that okay. idea. I just want to make sure that we're not, you know, in the past, um, when we've had performances and things at city dock, then the maritime museum is also having their things. So I just right. don't want us to be too overlapping no. of things. That's no. you know, that sort of thing. Right. And that's why the staggering of places and times and everything for the events, um, is occurring. So, uh, it's, okay. it's, it's still in formation and you can take a look at the sheet. Um, there's other things on there too, but also keep in mind that a lot of these events um, are not just AIPPC. You know, it's just us right, scheduling right. around those events and coordinating. The other idea right. too is, you know, if it, it, they're partnerships. So AIPPC right. would partner with Pip Moyer. Right. We're, we're not necessarily right. running it, but if Pip Moyer no, wanted I love to it. do- I love that idea. Yeah, an activity. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm just explaining so everybody knows that. I know it sounds like a lot, but um, we're not, actually controlling each one of these events. It's not just an AIPPC. Right, it's, right. it's, you know, so it's getting Maryland Hall and Art Farm in to help create a family night. Um, you know, and then other um, of our um, partners in each ward that we could work with that would want to do this. Okay, so like, gotcha. Well, so, yeah, so, I know yeah. that, I, I know that as you and you and I have discussed before over at um, with, with grapes and wine cellars and yeah. Tastings Gourmet, they've already talked within one one another, and they definitely want to do more activities jointly uh, once things open up. And, and so, but I do know for, for the actual July 4th, that's probably not an option, but maybe they might do something on that Saturday or that Friday night or that, that sort of thing. So that's still, you know, in planning stages. Okay. But I yep. certainly, since that's in Ward 5, I certainly don't want to, you know, compete or if more effort is needed, to help support bumper and help promote that um, I'm willing to, you know, we, we don't have to do that, that thing at, at grapes either. You know, we could do that at another time on, on yeah. another month or another time in July. So I'm flexible Definitely. with how that works. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then it's, you know, stuff like, um, you know, the West Annapolis association um, is just, you know, us providing possibly art kits to the kids, you know, after they do their neighborhood, parade, you know, and then they have some art. So, I mean, it's, it's real simple things. It's just ensuring that um, it is spread out throughout the city um, for a number of reasons, not just so everybody's coming downtown and congregating, but also that every ward is having some sort of participation in the weekend. So, um, so feel free to go over the Google doc that I sent out and um, add any comments. Um, to it and if um, um, we can move it along by partnering with somebody in your ward to do it, that's great because you know we will need help definitely to make this an amazing event, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. And as far as rain date, yes, the city will set up a rain date because the fireworks are um, starting 9.30 on Sunday, but I'm sure there'll be a rain date for all of it if it's gonna be awful that weekend. And, and sometimes we do get rained out on 4th of July. So it's a very valid thing for us to be um, mindful of. So. Are you done? I don't want to interrupt yeah, you. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I am. The rest okay. of it's on there. I pretty much covered all the activities that we've proposed to do. So. I just had a, a question when the city had an idea of when they were going to send out a, um, the, uh, about having the floats for the parade, uh -huh. like the requirements, like the um, Arts Alliance was, um, I, I told my, my crew that this was coming down the pike and they were all excited and then started to plan, you know, and I'm like, wait, I haven't heard anything past my meeting. So um, 
does the city know when or I have, have they sent something out yeah. or I mean I have a link and I'll, I'll send it out to all of you okay. to, to, to share but yes if you want to enter um and sign up to do a float then yeah Felicia has a link that you guys can use so. okay yeah um, cool they were yeah we already paint and colors and things yes. coming out of I don't even I know. know they, they I mean, went off I mean you, I mean I, you know my board is all artists so you get them a little bit and they just yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all yeah, they need. It'll be, it'll be great. And and there is a, a basic theme for um the weekend is is to thank our frontline workers. So mm -hmm. um we're gonna make sure that you know at the front of the the parade, you know, the floats like you know, our, our medical workers and our, our police department and our fire departments and everything get get a chance to to, to display their artistic creative look. So, and Felicia is, is she ahead of that? Right. Felicia or, is, yes, yeah, she's special projects. So, uh, special um, projects. Okay. Yeah. So, she'll be okay. All right. Because I actually but, meet with yeah, my. I'll forward her email to you and you'll. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Because I actually meet with my team um, next week. So, awesome. Yeah. Perfect. She's events. No. She's events. Okay. okay. Sorry. Yes. Brian. Yeah. Sorry. Um, she, but I don't have to. Great. The parade oh. is on Saturday, correct? The parade is Saturday. Mm -hmm. The boat parade, the tall ships is on Sunday. But and the fireworks are on Sunday, did you say? Fireworks are Sunday, yep. Okay. Yeah, and, and the city plans on um, presenting a preliminary calendar of events coming up um, maybe later this month as soon as um, some of this stuff is starts to become confirmed. So um, everybody will have that. So you can start planning. Um, you know, if you want to go to the beach on Saturday, it's fine. You come home for the fireworks or whatever. So they'll be releasing that information as it, as it becomes um, is, more solidified. Does, uh, does June, yeah. does Arts Week fall under public outreach updates? Yeah. So I was, yeah. So I sent that. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That was going to, I was going to touch on that. Just okay. read through the email that is not on our agenda to vote this month, but we will next month um, about participating and being um, in partnership with them and sponsoring. So um, please feel free to read through that email. If you, I don't know if I can answer any questions on it, but if you want me to, I can try or um, just feel free to respond back to Darren and Allison and they can answer your questions on it. And then we'll present it for vote next month. But this is just like their idea for June, for like for, like this is just Arts Farm idea, not like, cause the Alliance has, we have our own thing going on. Yeah, so this is like just, that. this is, um, so Art, Art Farm, um, Allison and Darren are spearheading, you know, the portion of it. So this is, <clears throat> I'm sorry, my allergies are so crazy. Like my, um, they have asked us to help with the um, community outreach portions of it. And that's what that email is outlining what they've proposed and that AIPPC could partner with on it. Oh, okay. okay. That's not the whole Arts Week. <laughs> Right, because all these yeah. all, all these galleries are doing different stuff. So yep, yeah. Um, David, do you have okay. anything for um, public outreach? I do not, Genevieve. Okay, and Krista gave us um, her updates because she reached out for Ward Five for the event for Fourth um, of July. But do you have anything that you wanted to add, Krista? Um, one of the things I wanted to to find out is if someone in any of the wards, not just mine, but any of the wards decides that they want to have sort of their own event um, and wants to get on the city calendar so that it's highlighted um, with regards to marketing and that sort of thing, is there yes. a way that they could do that? Or is there a timeline or who would they get in touch with you or what? Yeah, well, so more than likely, if it's an event in the city, they've already um, contacted Felicia to get a permit for it. So Felicia pretty much okay. knows all the events. But I also think that, yeah, they could they could share it. Like if it wasn't a permitted event, didn't need a permit, um, we could definitely share it with Felicia or Mitchell, uh, who is generating. Yeah, just so that we are, we are promoting other activities and 
you know, due to COVID, you know, the businesses, and I know Ashley was going to check to see uh, what we can promote or what we have to be mindful of with regards to if we're partnering um, art with a restaurant or, you know, for example, in the grapes, I keep mentioning that shopping center, the clock tower, because that is kind of the main hub of um, our ward. Um, And it has a big parking lot. So, you know, it can accommodate uh, cars and that sort of thing. And it has this sweetheart statistorie, um, of course, Calico Corner is there too, um, but it has like a walkway. So if artists wanted to line up their artwork, they could do that as well. I know Elizabeth and I have talked about that. To what extent they have in what they have in mind, what Stacy and Ellen um, have been talking about. And even if they would, I don't know for sure that they're going to do it for the July 4th weekend. But when they do something like that, um, I guess what I'm asking is, what support would they get? Like what marketing would they be able to get for something like that? Um, same holds true in SOFA with uh, main ingredient and, uh, or main and market, I should say. Um, and that area, there's the barbershop guy there, the new nail salon, there's a flower um, store there as well. And, you know, they, again, they have a bit of a parking lot that they could, you know, put some, have some activities or have some music or something like that too. So we had talked about, whether or not we could make something happen over there sometime over the summer as well. Um, I do know for 4th of July, they're not going to have, um, you know, anything because they will only be open for a short amount of time. Um, but, you know, what, what can we promote or what can we do with them? I, you know, can we offer some money towards some music and have a musician there or, you know, that sort of thing at any of these areas? Okay. Go ahead, Ashley. So um, your part of the city code is pretty broad. You can use your funds to promote art in public places, performing arts, or the general advancement of any work of art, um, all of which okay. are defined terms. But performing art is generally what you think of. It's music, dancing, singing, musicians. Um, art in public places is a more specified thing that has to either be in a city facility on city land, or it has to be on private property, but there has to be city funds involved in the installation of it or maintenance of it. Um, But then you also have the broad category of advancement of any work of art. And work of art is a very broadly defined term in the city code. Okay, good. So you just have to make a justification that it falls in one of those three categories. And if you can make a case for it that you get your board members to agree with, then you can, you can promote and or do funding for it. Okay. And it has to be free. Thank right? you. Um, generally speaking, uh, your code doesn't really speak to whether it has to be free or not. I mean, that can be at this discretion of yours that free definitely is more of, is going more towards advancement, um, you know, criteria. But in theory, I, I'll double check, but I don't think there's actually anything in the code that says one way or the other that it has to be free. But that that might be in your policies and procedures. I'd have to double check on whether you give sort of preference to those that are more generally open to the public. Got it. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, any questions or Anything about uh, public outreach updates? Is um, Darren running, is she ahead of Arts Week? Yes. Is yeah. it Darren and Allison or is it just it's, Darren? It's Darren and Allison, yeah. Oh, the two? Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna <clears throat> just set Arts Alliance. We're doing fire and mud. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Great pottery. Okay. Yeah, and then we're getting our torch out and like, no, I don't know, jewelry's doing something with torches and fire and stuff. I'm so glad you guys are doing that, not AFAPC. I'm yeah. Liability. <laughs> yeah, we have a big insurance policy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, for structure review, we have um, moved forward with replacing the R on the Old Fourth Ward sign. Um I do not know specifically when um, that will be scheduled through Public Works to be um, reapplied to the kiosk, but hopefully soon. So um, that has been completed, approved, and the um, moving forward. Um, 
don't have any other structural reviews at this time. And then the city doc concert schedule review. I sent out that Google Docs to everyone. Um, it is a working document. Again, um, there's a few things on there that have been confirmed, but I will just run through it here real quick. Um, okay, so the schedule is the same as I proposed before. The only thing different was we had um, the contemporary dance on the original schedule performing every Sunday, but they will only be performing every first Sunday of the month. Then um, in July, on the July 4th, it is the Navy Jazz Band that will be performing. Then on the 11th, we have Carousel. And then on the 18th, we have Crabtown Big Band. And then of course, on July 9th and July 25th, so July 9th is Tango and July 25th is Salsa Night. Um, coming up um, in August, so there will be an event for Alex Halley's um, 100th birthday and that is going to be on Saturday the 14th so far. Uh, I have a meeting tomorrow for public outreach on that to catch me up on what they're planning and what they would like to do. Who's I'm sponsoring not, that? Um, the city, I believe. Oh. They're working. I don't know. I have not attended a meeting yet. So, okay. um, yeah, I will um, loop you in on that, David. And um, I'm not sure if it goes to Sunday or not. So. Right now I'm holding that position just in case they need city doc for Sunday, but I'm not 100% sure. But if they don't, then we'll open it up. But August 22nd is Starvation Army Jazz Band. And then again, um, the same for August 13th is Tango and August 29th is Salsa. The contemporary dancers will be there the first Sunday, which is August 1st. And I proposed a city doc movie night with the Annapolis um, Police Foundation. So we'll see. And like I said, this is a lot of this is all tentative. Um, for the September, we're still filling in September dates. I do have a New Orleans um, traditional kind of old school rock and roll, um, Zydeco Agogo on September 19th. And, and then uh, again, September 10th is City Doc Tango, September 26th is Salsa Night, and the Contemporary Dancers will be there September 5th. October, I don't have any bands at this time. Um, I am going through our list of people that we had scheduled in 2020. And like I said, um, you know, some of them are waiting until everybody's been vaccinated. So we'll just keep going through the list and then um, I'll open it up after that if our um, previously scheduled bands from 2020 cannot perform, then we'll um, contact other local artisans to see if they can come in and play. So for October, it is October 3rd. We have um, the contemporary dance team will be there and October 8th is City Doc Tango. I did not schedule salsa at this time for um, that last Sunday because it is Halloween weekend. So, um, and it might be cold at that point. I'm not really sure. I don't, I don't know if we can predict the weather anymore. But based on the schedule that we have now, we have 15 music events. Um, I put an estimated amount of $700 per event. Uh, it may be less. And that's mainly because we're only booking large bands down there because that's really the best um, uh, booking for that venue. You have to have um, music and it has to be able to be projected. So smaller bands, acoustic, don't work so well down at City Dock. So roughly um, in previous years, that has been what we have paid our, lar our larger bands, our big bands, um, and anything that's a four piece band or, or larger. So 15 music events at 700 is $10,500. Four dance events um, at 
at $250 each is $1,000 for Tango events at $500. The Tango events um, did go up because Eddie is bringing an orchestra with him now to the event. So it's not just a DJ um, or one violinist. It'll actually be an orchestra playing music for the Tango. So that'll be $2,000. And um, the three salsa events at 450, which covers um, both the instructor and the DJ, that's $1,350. So the total for summer um, programming, not including 4th of July events, uh, currently is at $14,850. I've put in a rough estimate of what we're looking to spend on 4th of July based on um, the proposed events that we have on the schedule right now. And maximum I was looking at was $8,000. It could be less. It just really depends on what we all decide to do. And um, in the end, basically. So currently, if we did um, a Friday night tango, that's 500. If we did um, the three bands um, on Main Street <clears throat> on Saturday, that's three times 700, so it's $2,100. And then the Saturday salsa would be $450. So it's well under the 8,000 currently, but uh, if we add music, I don't have um, the Chambers Park concert um, invoice yet, so um, if we added music at Chambers Park on Friday, that would be a sponsorship from AIPPC as well as any music that we introduced for the family picnic night and the crafts. I do not have an estimate on cost for those yet. Genevieve? Yes. Did, what was it that you said was going on in September, the week of, let's see, I guess 17th and 18th? Um, I don't have anything on 17th and 18th. Um, All right, good. I thought I heard you say something because that is when we are talking about this songwriter festival right. uh, weekend. So I just, I, I heard you say something. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, no, on the 19th is Sunday and we do have a, um, a tentative band schedule down at City Dock, but. That must be what I heard. Yeah. All right. Just, Double checking. Yep. So any questions at this time on um, the tentative schedule? Uh, I It should be uh, solidified by next month and we can vote on um, the spending for it. Okay. Yeehaw. Yeah. I'm actually, this actually got me really excited because I'm, I'm ready to have events again, but you know, baby steps. <laughs> okay, and then next up is everybody's favorite since I was just talking. <laughs> talk, hold on. Apparently the dog's favorite too. Okay, my alarm went off, sorry. Um, <laughs> since, um, we're talking about spending money, the budget. Did everybody have a chance to review the updated budget I sent out? And does anybody have any questions on it? Okay. So the, what, I'm just saying, the 160 that was for the sign you just mentioned. I'm sorry, what was that? Line six is 160 bucks for sign craft. Yes. Okay. You just yeah. said invoice, didn't get a. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I thought. Yeah, so um, coming out uh, would be the 3,500 for the taxi cab mural, the Juneteenth award of $3,000. Sign craft was um, $160. That was for the R for the Old Fourth Ward kiosk. And then um, it won't be reflective. I'm not really sure to tell you the truth. Um, we can double check with the city, but how they do the compensation for the poet laureate but um, that will be reflective instead of 500 per year that we um, changed it to a thousand per year. So that will show up on the uh, budget as well at some point.
Okay. If we are good, we can move on to new business and that concludes all of the old business for tonight. So um, we will let Debbie Wood come in and speak to us. Um, they're looking to put a new turtle sculpture at the Chesapeake Children's Museum and I'll let her tell us about it. Hello. Um, so I know most of you. Hi, nice to see you. Hey, Debbie. Not yet in person. Um, so the Children's Museum is in a uh, city owned park and around 2004, I'm not exactly sure when, um, Arts and Public Places installed an exhibit that was just rough wood, tree trunks that were chiseled and sculpted. And they were lovely, but over time they deteriorated. So about a year ago, I asked if the remaining ones could be removed because they really didn't look like anything and we were closed. So I thought it was a good time and, um, and we, we got to thinking of a new project for the uh, concrete circles that were left. But anyway, one, one and I got a grant from Four Rivers to do some mosaic tiles on some of the bases that were left behind. But one of the statues was a turtle and I recently found a beautiful turtle sculpture that's about the same size and instead of raw tree trunk, it's made out of recycled aluminum. Um, the same art emporium also had a mailbox with a matching turtle on top, also made of recycled aluminum, and a pinwheel that's four feet wide that I pictured going on the roof so that you know it doesn't get messed with, but it would be directional. It would show you the strength and the direction of the wind. Um, and then while I was looking, I saw some really cool hand-painted turtles uh, kind of a Latin American motif, bright colors, and I thought it would be cool to put those all around the park on the trees. Um, I don't know if any of you remember Mel Wilkins, but uh, he passed away about a year and a half ago. But anyway, his signature in every park that he had a hand in was to put a face on a tree. So anyway, I want to put butterflies all over the park. So grand total would be a bit over $2,000. Um, so I'm asking if Arts and Public Places would like to support this project. We'll open it up for questions. Do we have any questions for Debbie? Yeah, this is Krista. I'm just curious, what's the visitation of the, of the um, museum? Okay, when it's not a pandemic, <laughs> um, sometimes we, we like to say we get a thousand people a month, but that might also count going to a school or being at the Kunta Kinte Festival, um, but about a thousand a month, roughly. When, when it's not a pandemic. Right now we have, because um, I've been there a lot the last couple of weeks, um, there's a, there was a donated basketball hoop outside and with the weather being lovely we've had adults and children shooting hoops in the parking lot um, and since Bates Middle School has had some kids go back in person they'll walk through you know on their way home I'm not there in the morning but they'll walk home in the afternoon um, and when uh, again not COVID um, we would let them get come in for a drink of water so we would count the kids that would just pop in and say hi on the way home from school. Most of our visitors are in Arundel County. Uh, there are families like Genevieve's that can walk. Um, David comes with his son. Uh, Elizabeth's daughter was there when she was younger. Let's see. I know Brian's been there. I don't remember seeing you there with a kid, but. I think we've all been there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My other question is the turtle, is it something that they can climb crawl on. on and play on or is it something that is decorative? You climb on it. That was my specific request. And when, when I was there, the, the man who runs the place, and I think he has a hand in creating the art too. I was looking at one turtle and he said, oh no, no, children, you want this one. And he showed me another turtle that had softer edges on it. He said, this is, this is the one that I made for the daycare center down the street. So they are, it's made to be climbed on. Or I wouldn't have it. Debbie, why don't you tell them about the grant application and the ideas that you have uh, for the place? 
what, which, which grant application? <laughs> I do grants all the time. Well, I know you were doing a big one for this year for some of the, some, some stuff. I don't. I, well, the parking like lot grant, and we're getting, we've been approved for $40,000 from the Maryland Heritage Areas Authority. And it's mostly to redo the parking lot so that we don't have to wood chip it twice a year. Um, and to make it not only environmentally friendly, but also pedestrian safe, so that when kids get out of the car, they go right onto a sidewalk that has interactive exhibits along it. Um, because otherwise they're stepping out of the car into the mud, if we haven't wood chipped recently, and they walk to the asphalt where the cars are driving. So it's to get kids out of harm's way and also something that's more environmentally friendly. Um, but these interactive exhibits, I've sketched several of them and it's all about how uh, our interactions with nature, how the wild animals, you know, this one has um, paw prints and then you can touch them. And the, the words are all in Spanish and English. All our outdoor signage is Spanish and English. Um, say another one is solar energy. So inside this plexiglass um, box are solar panels that move according to how much sunshine there is that day. And I have interest from the Annapolis Makerspace to make some of these things. So hopefully that will move forward. Uh, but the, the guy who's doing the, the parking lot project, I picked him because he's the one, Chris Moore, uh, he installed the ponds behind the museum to slow down the, the rainwater from the street before it gets to Spot Creek and removed all the Phragmites. So he knows the park and he's environmentally conscious and he lives in Annapolis. So he's our project manager and he says uh, June looks like is when he's going to get started on the parking lot. And then also thanks to Genevieve, we're, I'm pretty sure I haven't heard anything otherwise. I'm pretty sure we've been approved for $23,000 from the, just the state general assembly to have an amphitheater that Chris Moore designed when I said, can you be in charge of this parking lot project? He said, oh yeah. And how about this? So now we will we'll get money from the state so he can add an outdoor amphitheater. So all these activities you're talking about, where can you hold them? We want action in the park. It's a city park. And I'm looking forward to scheduling some stuff in the amphitheater. I did a little grant, I haven't heard back yet, to get, um, uh, what do they call it? A universal swing, a swing that anybody can get in. It's like a, an inner tube with a bottom in it. So somebody who's physically challenged could be lifted and put in it and swing along with two or three other people. I haven't heard back from that yet. I have more yeah. ideas if you want them. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, let's focus on the turtle. Okay, yes. <laughs> but yeah, and we'll have you back for the others. Okay. Um, any other questions regarding the turtle? So is this just, this isn't just for the turtle, this is the turtle, the mailbox, the pinwheel and butterflies. Yes. Right, four things. So what are the, what are the butterflies do? Is it just a cool thing to add to it? What, did I see what I thought I saw? Yeah, mm -hmm. to get you to notice nature. And that's what Mel's face does. I don't know if you've seen the one at, um, if, you, if you're in a parade, the street end park, what's the name of that street? When you leave Maryland Hall, there's a little street end park. Constitution? Mm, that's like one block down. Anyway, there's a tree there and I was there and I saw the face on the tree. I said, oh, Mel's been here. Mm -hmm. How big are the butterfly? Um, only about eight inches. Oh, and okay. I would, put them, I would put them high enough so it wouldn't tempt anybody to touch them, but they're brightly colored so you can't help but notice. And then the mailbox would be out by your mailbox or? Oh, yeah, we would replace the, the mailbox that we got for free from, uh, what's his name? Jared's store. Mm -hmm. um, he, he donated mailbox a long time ago. Jared um, Lemon. He just painted it. It's time for a new <laughs> one. Okay. Did anyone else get booted except for me? No, just oh, you. Wow. Okay. Sorry, cool. uh, David. Don't. Yeah. Do you have any questions, David? 
Um, no, Debbie. Um, I've seen uh, your work, and uh, I have no questions. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Debbie, so much for presenting. I really appreciate that. Um, I Thanks, will Debbie. You're welcome. And everybody saw the photos, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, yes, yes, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Do we have um, a motion to vote on the invoice that Debbie has presented? David, I have a motion to vote on Debbie's turtle project. Do we have a second? I second it. Okay. Um, Karma, could you do a roll call for votes, please? Uh, Genevieve. Aye. Joe. Aye. Elizabeth. Aye. Barbara. Sorry, I, I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> Krista? Aye. David? Aye. Karma? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Karma. Yay. Yay. Thank you. You're welcome, Debbie. Thank you for presenting. My pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Feel free to hang out. And listen um, to the rest of the meeting if you like. <laughs> Want to make dinner? Oh, but okay. I did want to mention um, September 26 is the Clint Kente Festival, which mm -hmm. is going to be mostly online, but a little bit at City Dock. Yes. So just as you mentioned, yes. a salsa night there. Yes. Yes. Well, um, 25th, yeah. Debbie, isn't it the 25th? It's, it's on the 25th. Yeah. It's, it's on Saturday. Saturday. Yep. Yes. Yeah, not on Sunday. And they did reach out to us. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. Jan reached out, and so um, uh, AIPPC may be partnering with her. So I'll, okay. I'll let us. Yeah. I'll I'll give another update um, for outreach next month once we David and I meet with her. Okay. Thank you, Debbie. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Now, I tried to do it earlier. We can do it now. We can talk about the Stanton Center um, art exhibit. I'll say this about it. Um, after having spoken with um, Tony Spencer and um, getting to meet the artist that he had sent us all the information about, um, Billy Keys, um, it was quite exciting. Um, Billy Keys is a very dynamic man. Um, he will tell you time and time again, he's 99 years old and turns 100 on May 2nd. Um, <laughs> but we're not allowed to have a party for him because it's already in the works and he doesn't want to have to do any work on his birthday. Um, <laughs> so um, we had the opportunity, Elizabeth and I um, met with uh, Christopher Beck and um, Tony Spencer and Billy Keys all towards uh, the facility. Um, we looked at a couple of spaces, um, the main lobby area being one of them, um, upstairs on the second floor, there is a 10 by 10 um, exhibition case um, that's about a foot and a half deep. Um, it has the ability to be locked. Um, and then there is the conference room upstairs that it currently has um, black and white photos around it. Um, we could also, we could use some of the space on the walls um, and also utilize the um, replica of the classroom that's set up. Um, Mr. Key's biggest concern was the lack of foot traffic. Um, and especially after talking, you know, hearing Elizabeth talk about the lack of foot traffic currently at Pitt Moyer, um, currently the only foot traffic that the upstairs would see is if people intentionally went upstairs. Um, it is not a space that is widely used um, and currently is not even open to the public. Um, it's open to the children that attend both school and after school programs there um, and their parents who come to pick them up. Um, so we would have to do a pretty major um, 
marketing and um, you know marketing blitz and you know a lot of publication surrounding something if we wanted to do something there. Um, Mr. Key's idea is sort of three parts. Um, he's an artist by nature. He's sort of Jackson Pollock in his um, in his style. Um, lots of really cool things. Um, Elizabeth, did you get a chance to go to his studio? <laughs> Pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was almost overwhelming. You're so talking much. about William Snowden keys. Um, I don't know that Snowden is his middle name, but maybe. You mean you mean his his in the garage of his house, all the art? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he, he's like he's ninety six on May first, I believe. No, he's not. He's one hundred on May second. Oh, that's right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> he's hung twice at 49 West. He's got he's a great, great guy. So um after the tour and before Elizabeth got to go see his work, um, she and I had a chance to just chat a little bit. Um while I believe that his work is really amazing, um, I think his artwork should be shown elsewhere in the city where there's a much higher amount of foot traffic. Um, I think that it could be combined, and we both talked about this. Um, with some of his collection. He has two pretty large collections, one being baseball. Um, overwhelmingly awesome. Uh, baseball bats, mitts, um, gloves, balls, um, photos, um, pretty much from the early 20s forwards. Um, he has over 5,000 baseball cards um, that are mounted on foam boards. He has write-ups on every... Um, prominent um, baseball player, um, an entire wall of his studio is dedicated to baseball. I think that that would be an amazing exhibit to go into the Stanton Center. Um, I think that the kids would really love it. Um, I would make sure that it was a locked cabinet because I could see my own kids thinking, well, that's a really cool baseball mitt <laughs> um, and taking off. Um, the other part of his exhibit or the, of his collection is all surrounding the war. Um, and it's a lot of war paraphernalia, um, guns, rifles, pistols. Um, what are they called? The hats? <laughs> I know they're called something else. Hard hats. <laughs> helmets. Thank you. <laughs> Combat helmets. Um, again, he was in the all black battalion in world war two. Um, uh, and he also got to meet Picasso. Um, he's, he's an amazing, amazing character. He wrote a, wrote a book about his life. He's a great guy. Right. All of that said, I think that the city, he's looking to donate his collections to the city. Um, She freeze in some respects. I think the base else, um, you know, but I do think that by putting his art there, I think they would not be doing him a favor, um, in, in as much as getting it out into the public eye. And I and we talked, and Elizabeth, you know, chime in. Um, <laughs> we talked about, you know, it would be really great to kind of showcase some of the collection along with some of the art because some of the art kind of is a reflection of the collection and his life. Um, and Brian, he has a cool new piece that would absolutely positively go with the um, Umbrella Sky project. It's, a, it's an art piece, Jackson Pollock Lake, and very clearly in the center of it, you can see the umbrella. Um, and you don't know what else is in it until you start staring at it and then you see different things and you're like, wow, <laughs> pretty amazing. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. I know that Tony Spencer had put together a pretty formal application. Um, I think at this time we should continue kind of outside commission discussions to figure out the best place and see if Elizabeth can fit him in a schedule somewhere in one of the other more public galleries. Carmen, this is Chris, but can you hear me? Uh -huh. um, so he's willing to donate his work to the city or donate them to be on view? 
for us. He's willing to donate exhibit. his collection. His collection is not necessarily his art. It's his collection of the baseball and then more arts, uh, the okay. war collection. Okay. It was, it's okay. a series of photographs um, and artifacts um, in both cases. And he does want to donate those in some way. Um, and I think that it's just, I think before we, we decided to start voting and deciding on things. Um, well, I guess what my, what my question is, do we, do we have a place, if he's willing, if he's willing to donate them to be on display for a certain period of time and that sort of thing, or is he trying to donate things that we would then keep in his name and in his honor? You know, are we, Brian, do we have, um, the storage to really be able to take care of a collection like that and everything that needs so, to be involved with regards to conservation. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to interject here for a second, Brian, hold on, please. Um, when I spoke to Archie about um, doing this display, the idea was to have it as a rotating display as well as having the executive director at Banneker Douglas, Chanel Compton, um, part of this whole planning process. So I think okay. uh, a wonderful home for it eventually would be at Banneker Douglas as, you know, okay. and, I, and I'm sure um, Ms. Compton would be happy to have it reside there. But I think okay. in the meantime that we, um, you know, they wanted it in the request was specifically by all three gentlemen um, to put it in the Stanton Center for a period of time. And then we can. Gotcha. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. That okay. sounds like a. That sounds like a. Losing you, Brian. Can't hear you. I actually have pictures of it on my. Of uh, so you guys can see the ones that are on, that can see the videos. See some of the uh -huh. pictures I took when I was there. Um, I just don't know how to do this. <laughs> You share I, your screen. I share my screen, so I just click on that. The green first. button on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I have to go to my email. Well, no, it it should pop up in a separate. So, so Elizabeth, you should open it first. Oh. So go to your email, open it first. Then when you go to share screen, then select the, that window, and then it will pop right up. So how do I go to it first? Like, I can't. I'm on a PC. Yeah, so just go to your email, like, where you have it stored first. But like you guys are on the whole screen for me. Oh, click. Yeah, just how do I? Just how do I get Kate? For what? Do, for view. Yeah, up on the right. Yeah, there's speaker view oh, and gallery view and exit full screen. So exit full screen. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I see what you're doing. Okay. Hold on. Let me get up here. Sorry. There we go. Okay. He's got a great picture of him with Fidel Castro. Yeah. And Fidel came to America and was trying out for the Mets. All right. Sorry. Two moments to just download. He also played pool with Ella Fitzgerald because his father and, and uncle had a pool, a billiards hall called the Keys Billiard Hall, right near the theater uh howard theater in dc that's so cool all they're, they're just downloading <clears throat> okay so then i go back to you guys let's see no that didn't happen Join did, you, did you already open the the files yeah there. Yeah, so you go back to the, the Zoom window. Okay. And then at the bottom, share screen. And then after you click that, you should have options of what window to share. Okay. I, mean, I need to go open this bigger. Oh, I meant full screen. Okay. Ah, oh, cool. This is so cool. <laughs> The little things okay so wait a minute. move you guys over here 
See guys, do you see that? Yeah. Yes, we see it. Okay. We Thank you. I'm like, I can't hear anybody. <laughs> We're on mute. We got Sorry. you. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, that's uh, yeah. You walk in. That's on the left hand side, and then um, that's further around. Um, so I took pictures. So I remember it. That's the other side of the room. Um, so that's him. He's a, he was a DC cop. So I thought that was really cool. And then the paraphernalia from uh, Wars. <clears throat> so that's him with um, Christopher Beck. They were talking, obviously. So I think I just have. I believe he was in the tank battalion, the all black tank battalion in World War II. Yeah. And we should get an oral history to go along with it as well. Yeah, I got him on video as well. Not here, but um, like on my phone, I just, he was talking about, he was just talking to, to Christopher and I just pressed record. Yeah. Um, Wonderful. Yeah, it's just to get sort of an idea of, um, Um, oh, here we go. Let me sorry. Let me go back to. Let me stop sharing. We can talk about. It. He was, yeah. I mean, as you saw all the stuff, he um, he has so many different things and stuff. But as far as a show, like even with the memorabilia, someone has to take this on. I mean, he he'll just be like here, you know, and you have to write all this stuff stuff up. Even having a show of Pip, you know, which we could totally do. But someone had, there's a spreadsheet, there's hanging stuff, there's wall cards, there's all this stuff that I don't, I, the artist does, you know, I don't do all that because I'm a volunteer. Um, it, it's a lot of time. Um, he wrote to do a all book, that. he wrote a biography too that is, tells his life story, but it would be great to get some of it documented uh, video or at least sound sound wise of him telling his stories because he's got a lot of them he does yeah no, it is something that tony spencer is also willing to take on um and so like i said i think that as opposed to weighing down the commission with all of the details and the finite planning um you know perhaps elizabeth and i can kind of do a an offshoot committee um start working with tony to come up with a better um, more detailed kind of rounded out plan versus all these pie in the sky ideas um, yeah. so that we can then move forwards and maybe we're talking about the showing in the fall or next winter um, yeah. if there's a better space. Um, I just don't think it's something initially we thought it, he wanted it up for his 100th birthday and he said no he didn't care he didn't want that so. Mm -hmm. Okay yeah and we can pick and choose some pieces to put in um, the display case at Stanton Center and then additionally work on um, the original idea of displaying artwork in Stanton Center in the reception area and then possibly upstairs too you said there was some wall space so yeah I think it's I think it's um, open for further discussion by the gallery um, the fine arts committee and we can move forward as well as definitely bring in Banneker Douglas to in on it because she can help curate yeah, Christopher and I talked um, after uh, Mr. Keys left, like there was like this lull time about having um, a show there with other artists, um, Genevieve, that you like you and I had talked about, um, because yeah. there is a nice, um, you know, foyer that you know, when you walk into, and then we could put like grids or additional stuff up around the window area, mm -hmm. so we could have hang more stuff. Um, okay. But of course the traffic is the air, you know, it, there's not a lot of traffic right now. Um, right. But I mean, like I said, for any show that we do, um, you know, it, it, there's a lot that the artist has to do that you guys don't see right. um, because you just see the final project, but like David can attest to it, <laughs> you know, having had shows in both. Did you have it at PIP yet or just City Hall? No, we were scheduled for PIP, but then COVID kicked us out. Yeah. Well, you'll come back. <laughs> so, we're still here. 
<laughs> yeah, but I mean, just setting up for City Hall was a lot of pieces and stuff, and yeah, all the the spreadsheets and all the. It's a lot of you know you know a lot of logistics and stuff, and you know yeah, transportation, getting our pieces to and fro, that kind of stuff. Yeah, he does have a lot of pieces that look very like Picasso esque, but he also he did a show at uh, Forty Nine that was a lot of crayon folk art. And people would come in, and I remember going, they'd be like, Brian, what's with the the children's art? And I would be like, oh, wait, this guy is an all-black battalion. He's 90, like two years old. And then I would tell a story that he told about a piece. For instance, in front of the Keys Billiard Hall, uh, uh, some uh, neighborhood, uh, the, the black folk from the neighborhood sitting in the lawn chairs outside, and maybe weeds growing. And he would say, despite the destitution in the streets, and then he'd point up to the second story windows. There's still flowers in the window box. And people would be like, oh my gosh, I want to buy it. And they got into it once you knew the story behind the folk art. Yeah. He's a, he's a fascinating, uh, I love Bill Key. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I think it, it seems to be a resounding yes, just a matter of coordinating. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, think, so. it, yeah, it, it, it could be possible multiple projects yeah. coming out of this. I really think so. Yeah. Further planning and moving forward. Sounds like a great idea. So thank you ladies so much for going and meeting with them and, and moving these projects forward. It's very exciting. And then last thing on the agenda is the Alex Haley birthday celebration. And as I said, my meeting is tomorrow. So I don't have much information, but they are planning it. <clears throat> um, to be an event on that Saturday. So we'll see. Um, I'll send out a, a brief, I guess, after my meeting tomorrow for all of you guys. And then I can answer questions at the next meeting about it. Leads us to open discussion. Does anybody else have anything that they'd like to talk about? Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, just real quick, uh, back to the fee piece that David had brought up. The language in the code is that it has to be open to the public, but there's no definition of that. So that's sort of in your discretion. Um, open to the public could mean no fees or it could be anyone from the public is welcome to come, but there's still a nominal fee that charge. So just wanted to clarify that. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks, Ashley. So I guess as long as we have the support of the board for the most part, those activities would probably be a go. Yeah. So I think that's a okay. discussion that we can further um, talk about right. Yeah. Okay. I have no more updates about the songwriter festival, but that people from around the country did come a few weeks back and I showed them all around and they are shooting for that weekend of the September 16th, 17th and 18th. It, it, they're, they're, they're thinking of, a lot of uh, bar and restaurant venues, but they are looking for a final performance night. Um, I guess City Dock is still on the table. Um, to Felicia and I spoke about it today, but they are looking at St. John's, Maryland Hall, and other places as well. So they, they still want to go forward with it this year because... They are shooting to go forward with it, but I hope to be able to get you more updated information okay. soon. Okay, because <clears throat> I thought that they were saying that um, due to, uh, well, then again, most tours are not touring this fall. So anyway, okay, just keep us updated. Never mind. <laughs> sure. Yeah, they're doing theirs in Florida. Uh, I think in June or July, they are moving ahead. But Florida has been way more open than us. Uh, but they right. are here for September. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, there was concern, I remember at the meeting, just the fact that um, last year's 
concert schedule and previous events were canceled and you know they have makeup dates this year and everybody was projecting that tours and um, some of the artists who are songwriters as well that come to the songwriter festivals would have to perform at those makeup dates so there was concern that they weren't able to do it this year but I actually um, know that a lot of the tours that thought that they would be back at the end of this year um, this summer um, end of the summer are not actually doing it. So that's, that's what I was talking about just for clarification, if anybody wondered what I was mumbling over here on my end, but, um, yeah, keep us updated, Brian. And, um, we'll add that in there as well as, um, arts alive is in September too, I believe with Damien. So we'll talk about that. Um, I will. I'm also, uh, on Thursday at two o'clock meeting the, the, um, fire marshal to go over the quick release, uh, things we're fabricating for the, uh, umbrella sky project. And, um, I still have to work out with uh, Comcast and Verizon, but we are trying to check off a list that we were given from um, the city. Uh, wasn't just public works, but all the departments that looked at this proposal. And I hope to get you more information on that too shortly. Thank you. Okay. Ooh. Was it Elizabeth that wanted to say something? Yeah. So this uh, this Wednesday, it will be the first dinner under the stars um, starting, and um, the Arts Alliance um, has made these really cool uh, paper flowers um, sculptures. I mean, they're truly like sculpture for about sixteen businesses on West Street. Um, we go all the way back, we have Level and we have Metropolitan um, and the that new pie place, I can't remember what it's called. Um, Dangerously Delicious. Yeah, something like that. Um, so we're so the Arts Alliance is delivering our sculptures tomorrow after we spray them. Um, and um, and then for, for May Day, so then on Saturday, um, <clears throat> all the sculptures will be out so people can you know, see them, photograph with them. And then the Arts Alliance will be, we'll have two big gigantic 44 feet by four feet canvases out front. Um, so people can uh, paint a flower on them. We'll have the sort of squares. Uh, we'd like everyone to come through, paint a flower, put their initials on there um, for um, May Day. So, and then we'll, um, you know, I don't know, auction them off at some point. Love or that. Something. So it's a big, it's a big Wednesday to Saturday, and then of course the first Sunday uh, event for uh, the Arts Alliance in the gallery. So come on out. Fabulous. Awesome. Any other updates or open discussion? Just super quick, uh, and this is really just to put it on everybody's radar because nothing's happening now. But I've been talking to the Annapolis Pride folks. Um, about how we can support some arts related uh, component of the Pride Festival at the end of October. So um, mostly it's just talking about what they can handle at this point or what they're interested in, but just that's probably gonna be coming down, some stuff will be coming down the pipeline a little bit in the coming months. So, um, and I also talked to um, a board member from the Maryland Federation for the Arts who is also interested in partnering with them. And so there's a lot of conversation right now. So hopefully some more practical stuff will be coming out of that in the next month or so. Wonderful. Thank you, Joe, for being the liaison and having outreach to them. <clears throat> Anyone else? Bumper, you got anything for us? I've got nothing, but if you guys, again, you know, I, I advocate for everybody who wants to do something here. So if you have any kind of function or whatever, please send it my way and I'll try to make it happen to the best of my ability. It doesn't mean it will happen, but I'll try to make it happen. So you need, if you need to use the facilities for anything. Wonderful. This is Krista. I have a side note that has to do with Greenscape. Can I, can I bring that up? Sure. Um, you know, Greenscape obviously is a beautification um, program for the city and 
I just, um, Bumper, I know you've been involved in it in the past. I don't know to what extent people were involved in it or if anybody here was. Um, but the Jeremy's Way crew, um, that's a garden that I designed many, many years ago um, at the Street End Park of Jeremy's Way. And the community, um, myself and Kelly Sherrill, shepherded it and then Phyllis Emmett came on board and then after Kelly and I moved away I still kept up with it but Phyllis was um, overseeing it and she's now passed the baton to on to or the past the rake I guess or the shovel um, on to some of the other members and um, over the weekend it came to um, our attention that they um, need an oak whiskey barrel um, and I wondered if any of you on, you know, on our commission or if you have any contacts of anyone who might have a round, um, decent size oak whiskey barrel to replace the one that we have, which is a focal point um, of that garden in front of the oak bench from the TKF Foundation. Um, it's a really beautiful spot. It's gotten a lot of attention over the last, I would say, last five years. It's gotten more and more uh, traffic and people um, enjoying that park in Eastport. So I just wondered if anybody has any connections with anybody who might have a, um, a planter, an oak um, whiskey barrel planter, uh, Jeremy's Way is looking for one. Thank you, Krista. I, okay. have, I, have, I have full whiskey barrels, but it has to be cut. So I mean, I've actually do have them to be made into planters. I just have never gotten around to it. Oh, um, can we... Okay, I'll sh I'll shoot you an email. Is that you, Bob? Okay. Yep, it's me. Okay, so, yeah. awesome. Thank you. All right. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, Bumper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, do I have a motion for adjournment? A motion to adjourn. Thank Second, you, it's David. David, all those in favor, raise your hand. I raised my hand. I, I third it. I see it through the phone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>